he looks for worshipers. It doesn't say he looks for worship. He's not an egotist in need of our affirmation. He's not insecure looking for someone to like him. He's God. But he looks for worshipers because you always become like whatever you worship. And he could want nothing better for me, nothing better for you, than for us to be a worshiper. Why? Because there's nothing better we could become than to become like him. No, what drew me up here was, was the culture of worship. Um, a, a, I finally found a group of people that, that um, understood that when you gather together without an agenda, really much else than we want to bless God, we want to exalt His name, and we want to come with an expectancy that when we do that, He comes. You know, worship is actually a lifestyle. And here at Bethel, that's one of the things we're trying to, we're, we're trying to personify, we're trying to see the Word become flesh. We're trying to raise up a community of worshipers who actually can dance and sing and all of those kind of things, but those things become a manifestation of what's happening day in and day out in their lives. But worship, when we come together, it is the one time that it's all about Him. It's not for us. It is not about edifying us. It's not about us feeling better. It is all about Him. And so I love that this house um, puts that first. Music is such a powerful tool in the transforming of nations. You know, years and years ago, around 1963, the Beatles, you know, who were very popular in my day, when they came out with, you know, they were singing, yeah, 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 and all these happy songs. When their albums came out, the Russians outlawed their music because they, uh, the KGB said, if people hear that there are happy people in the world through their music, they will tear down this Iron Curtain. And it's exactly what happened. And so it's amazing because you can preach something that somebody doesn't agree with and they will resist it. They're like, I don't agree with that. You know, songs are cross-cultural. You can, you can be in whatever denominational church, whatever kind, you know, but everyone sings here in worship. It's amazing to see one song go into every denomination and change lives. And that's the thing about music that, whereas uh, sometimes a message can't jump the different pawns. But you could put it to music and they will sing the very thing they don't agree with and little by little be transformed by it. Yeah, this is awesome. You know, in some ways this is something we've, we've, we've always dreamed that worship would be the thing, you know, the main thing. I think more than the music and the songs, like a lot of people are attracted to the church here or, or hear about the church through the music or a song or whatever. There's a culture that's contagious within the songs and within the worship, within the live moments that people can, can feel on the live CDs. And, that's really what we're, we're trying to capture. 